I wanted to get really into the kind of backstory. You, you've been shooting since 2005 and that's an incredible amount of years as a professional wedding photographer. Can you give us an insight into how you started shooting weddings and yeah. how you've maintained being a photographer throughout all those years? Oh man. Um, I, I remember when we first started, like it's not actually the best, I mean, the best job ever as a photographer. If you want to be cool, you want to be like a fashion photographer. But you know, nowadays, if you're a wedding photographer, you're cool, technically. <laughs> oh, you're a wedding photographer. You're so cool. When we were like starting off, being a photographer is like, you know, it's like, it's not the coolest thing ever. And then we, we actually started back like just before wedding day. Like we, the first wedding we shot is like a, a friend's wedding. And um, I still remember it that they don't have a wedding photographer for their wedding day. That's why I approached them like, hey, you don't have a wedding photographer? I can shoot your wedding. But in reality, I don't have any experience. Uh, neither to use a camera. What's a camera? What's this button doing? Is What is it made of? How to shoot a wedding? I'd never been to a wedding myself when I offered myself wow. to shoot their wedding day. But then... Uh, Helen told me, like, Helen asked me, Don, you don't have any idea. You don't have a camera. How are you going to shoot your wedding? Well, well I'll just borrow a camera from someone. And then there's, there's a, this, this friend that he, he, he likes this like, techie stuff. He, he, he loves gear. And he's, he has like, oh, I can borrow you my camera. It's super awesome. It's like uh, seven megapixels um, camera. It's like one of those Sony point and shoot metallic pink thing. When you push the button, and I appeared to the wedding with that with that camera, but then to my surprise, there was like a photographer, actually a film photographer, like an analog photographer on, your, on the wedding day. It okay. was hired by her father. And oh man, I have to. Oh, should I should I shoot or should I just like leave? But then some something in front of my, I mean inside my ear tells me like you have to shoot. Yeah, at least you have to try. So I asked this guy, hey, dude, I'm so sorry. I, I have this camera. I'll be behind you far away. I won't bother you. But I promised the couple that I shoot their wedding with this. Like, yeah, just don't be in, in the middle. Just don't be in front of my cameras. I, I won't be. I won't be there. And, you know, I did the the, the, the shittest wedding photos ever. <laughs> it's it's so horrible. It's so horrible. I'm, I'm, I'm just like applying everything with like soft focus all the time. So you won't notice you won't notice the pixels. And Helen and I prepared the wedding album, the scrapbook. Uh, and a month after, we showed it to the, this couple during dinner, and they started crying actually when they saw this album. Wow. They started crying, and not because the photo is shitty. It's <laughs> it's <laughs> it's because <laughs> it's because their wedding photographer, this analog photographer, he lost all the data of their wedding day. Wow. Oh my he gosh. Lost everything. And I was like, dude, if this shitty photo made people cry, make people emotional, what if we can do it better? Mm. What if we can deliver like more emotional photo with high quality? And that's when we started practicing and going into wedding photography. Wow, incredible. And so that was in around 2005 when digital cameras first came out. Yeah. Well, not first came out, but exactly. they were... 2004, more or less. Wow. I think that time it was like a 5D classic, the 5D Mark One, more or less. Yeah, still love that camera. Can't sell it. Yeah. <laughs> Colors on it are beautiful. I, I still have one. It's They're amazing. So, yeah, the, the colors on it are so beautiful. And I just love that feeling man and also the emotional tie of you know learning on that body the first ever yeah that's that's amazing so okay so you mentioned a lot about you know the emotion and, and this couple crying tears of joy because their film photographer sadly lost the film but they had your photos and you know I see a lot of emotion in your photography so how have you what happened next so you knew that that was important and that's what you wanted for anyone who's like at the start of their journey, wanting to become a wedding photographer, um, what was your what was it like in two thousand and five? Yeah, and Helen. It it was really hard. It was really hard back then. 
um, because you know, in 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 the place where I live, I live in in the islands, in an island, and it's it's hard to make a living out of here if you don't know any anyone. Plus, we're we're immigrants. I'm 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 immigrant. I'm the, and I don't know anybody here. I don't know the language, and the struggle is real. If you don't know the language and you don't you know empathize with people, because they're like mostly Spanish here or English or German, people who live here. Okay. But you know, it it just took. I mean, it took time. It took time to like, to to, to break that barrier of cultural difference, until we had like the first real wedding. Wow. And so, you said about you know. So Canary Islands is is what where you where you are. Or, or the, yep. the context for what you just described was the Canary Islands, right? So, um, exactly. So getting to another culture and yeah breaking those barriers but you you shoot in so many a hey, the jaeger's coming out i like it <laughs> it's coming it's coming out man it's coming out <laughs> it is one for ad one for megan one for session and one for miranda and one go. for caroline <laughs> and for all you guys beautiful cheers <laughs> so yeah you mentioned these cultural barriers and shooting all these I mean, you've shot in so many different locations. So how does someone go from, okay, wanting to break into your local, you know, community and, and that culture, breaking through those barriers, but then ending up everywhere and accepted by, feels like everyone. Exactly. I mean, I mean, it's not, it wasn't easy, right? But there was like, there was like uh, one of my mentors, um, his name is Nathan, uh, Nathan Sanz. He's, he's like a, a very great photographer and admire him so much he's still shooting right now he's been like shooting for 30 years and um he 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 said he said one time that hey dude dude you have to take advantage of of your i mean cultural difference i mean you have to take advantage i mean maybe if you don't empath empath empathize with pe people like me who's from europe why don't empathize with people of your same culture like mm. Asians, like, mm. and something click on it, Ping. like, dude, we're everywhere, we're everywhere, we're in Europe, we're in Asia, we're in America, we're in South America, we're in Africa, we're everywhere. So that's that's how I started. Like something clicked, and then started like, what if I try to get jobs around the world through this? I mean, with the same culture as mine, and it's it will be easier to break that barrier. And it happened. It happened. It just like takes time to be friend of someone, not for benefits, but I mean to cool to cultivate real friendship. Yeah. Plus your friends you already have who's living in abroad, you take advantage of that connection yes. and exploit that connection. Like, hey dude, I'm going there, I'm gonna uh, uh um surf in your couch, um, do some photo shoots there. And from there on, I mean I mean it, it, it started I mean the door of opportunity is starting to get bigger. Yes. From no one wants to hire you, then everyone wants to be your photographer. Wow. Okay, cool. So are you saying, like, do you employ some of these methods even now? Because, again, like, you, you've consistently been shooting in, in many places. So how are you, you, you have created, like, a ripple effect. And, and yes, people want you as your photographer. But for, for the person who is just trying to actually make it in their own town, or they want to make it in the towns close to them those are the destinations right like for them and then from yeah. there yes the ripple effect will continue but what would you say is a good way for them to break into that uh, local community mm. and then the, the local towns around them exactly i mean do a photo shoot there because in that in that town in that place first of all i mean if you don't you haven't shot shot in that place before normally people won't hire you if you're like starting off they have to see something. It's it's weird. When I was starting, like the, the people always ask this question, have you shot in this place before? And when I said no, when I, when they said no, like, oh, what a pity. Like, ah, like, dude, what? It's it's always like that when you're starting off. Most of the people, most of the clients that comes up to you, they always ask, like, have you shot there before? Yeah. And there's like there's like itch to lie a little bit. Yes. <laughs> So, so you know, yeah. do you still get that question now? Like if, you know, 
oh, as, as no. experienced as you are, do you still get that question now? And, and how do you respond to it? Yeah, I, 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 I mean, it's not that often as before, you know, because they went, they go to your portfolio, they go to your Instagram, they go to your page and they're like, oh, he's everywhere or they're everywhere. But then, then and now you will get this kind of client that doesn't have a, an Instagram page. They don't have like social media. They're super manual. Actually, one of the clients that I just like went, I went like personally up to the city, drove to the city, me and Helen to see them face to face and like sign a contract in paper that wow. I haven't done like for ages. <laughs> like, they're, like, they're like super manual. And they asked like, have you shot in this place? And I just like, no, I haven't. And ah, okay, okay, okay. But have you seen? No, I haven't. But, and then I just like try to explain them, educate them in the process like of how uh, that won't affect their photographs on the wedding day. Mm. Because I, I'm there, we are there to solve their problems, not yeah. to add it up. Yes. Yeah, totally. So do you do like, um, how do you solve that problem in, in that moment? Is it, do you do like a, like a recce with them, a location scout? Um, how do you kind of give them that comfort that they're looking for, that Don and Helen can, can shoot this wedding uh, in their style and it doesn't really matter that they haven't been there before? Exactly. What we do is like, we just like walk around that area and do a selfie that we've been there. It's like yeah. we've, we've been scouting. But sometimes like we're not actually scouting. We just like pass by like, just to see, then just like, you know, to comfort them. Because, yeah. you know, sometimes it's not necessary to go in the place, in that exact place, to know what kind of photography you, you'll be able to create with that. Because the light is like always changing. Yeah. It's not always the same. It will be different on the time that you'll be there. And you'll be just like, it's hard to plan. When you plan, you get disappointed most of the time. Yeah, 100%. Many, many times been to, to a place. And yes, as you met, you know, the season's different, the light is different, the things change for sure. Um, and doing a location scout, you know, or recce, even just before, even on the morning off, like sometimes just getting it early is has proved like super beneficial. But whatever it whatever it takes to to give the client that comfort and um yeah, confidence that that you can shoot it on the day. Exactly. The, yeah. That's great. That's great. Exactly. So I wanted to go, I keep wanting to go back to sort of your, your background and your story. So you're from the Philippines. Helen is from Mexico. You said, you know, people are all over, all around the world that look like you. How did you both end up from the Canary <laughs> Islands? <laughs> and yeah, let's just, I'll just leave out that. How did you end up on the Canary Islands? <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Well, actually, I came, I came here because um, my father, I, I haven't got to know him uh, in person. And um, because they, they my parents uh, broke when they, before I got, I mean, before I was born. So technically, I don't know my father. That's why I went to Canada because he lives here. Oh, wow. And um, yeah, and it's the first time that I'm going to be living with him. And that's, that's like one of the journey because I haven't, like, my family is like a, a complex family like my mother had lots of husbands and my father has lots of wives and we're like united colors of benetton <laughs> different different nationalities different mix this is more white and then brown and there's a little bit of curry in here a little bit of mango there <laughs> so, beautiful it, it, it add, i mean it adds to the flavor of my family yes. but yes i went here um to, uh, to know my father and I met him here and got to know Helen in Canary Islands as well. And yeah, that's that's how we started our origin story. Got in love with Helen so oh, much. That's beautiful. That's really and beautiful. I stayed and I stayed here. Yes. And so how long have you been there for now? How many years? Oh man, let's say two thousand and eight. Two thousand and seven. Two thousand and seven. Oh, Since okay. two thousand seven. My goodness. So did you start in the in the Philippines then when you were shooting weddings or where did you, where did you kind of start kick off? Well, I, I started in the, here in the islands, in oh, the Canary okay. Islands. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. That's why it was hard to get into it, to break mm. the barrier because yeah. of the cultural difference. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So 
it was hard to break in. You moved across. Like, do you, did you imagine yourself being here where you are now? You now have uh, a daughter, right, as well. Is that right? And you have a dog. You mentioned the other day. You're married. You're shooting destination weddings. Like, what, yeah. How did you do? You, did you imagine you'd be here in this position right now? No, nobody planned to be here, right? I mean, I don't know. Like, maybe you, you like, you like, you get like ten percent of answers just like that. Like, yeah, I'm a destination. It's my destiny to be a destination <laughs> photographer. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, but you know. It, it happened by accident mm. and 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 that accident isn't like you know it's not it's not like a lottery at all but we we had this passion about wedding that we saw how important it was how important it is in, in someone's lives to have this kind of pictures and, and from there on it just rolls it just rolled it just rolled and until until we went into that for you we didn't we didn't plan it i mean it's just like mm, recommendation through recommendation and being friends of friends of friends of friends and friends and going into that circle of friends and that's that's how actually a, a good business should grow yeah. not you know basing all your um all your hard work just on on, on, on online presence well wow, okay cool so um with with destination weddings like before <laughs> before this call actually I was looking at your Instagram profile. You have like a lot of flag emojis and I was doing a little quiz on myself so if I could guess like all the emojis. <laughs> it's definitely a lot harder to guess them when they're like super small. So I use Google, but you're shooting everywhere from like Hong Kong to Thailand, the Philippines. Uh, I think I saw France and Italy in there. Are these all upcoming destinations? And and yeah, what, is, um, yeah, what, what does the year kind of look like for you right now? <laughs> Yeah, it's everything that I post there is like the, an update of what's coming next for this year, yeah. for 2023. It'll be it'll be crazy, actually. I don't know if I will survive uh, April. <laughs> Please survive it. Why, why would you not? <laughs> why would you not survive April? What's happening in April? Oh, oh my gosh, it's April is just like it's gonna be hectic. I thought like April will be easy because yeah. like oh everyone's gonna be in vacation, it'll be easy. But suddenly like. Uh, one wedding here is going to happen in, in Bali, a three-day wedding. And then I have to go back to Hong Kong because they get, there's going to be like a lot of shoot, doing doing a lot of portrait shoots, some product shoots, watches, um, rings, diamonds, and then go back to Phuket and do like a family shoot, a portrait shoot, couple shoot in Phuket and go back to Bali and then afterwards Hong Kong. And then I'm just like chatting with a couple in Fiji. They like, they're like going to Fiji like, Fiji is a little bit far away from Asia. It's not actually near. Yeah. It, it's, it's actually like, uh, it's, it's crazy. It's going to be crazy. But at the same time, it's something I'm looking forward to because that's how, you te- how I test myself, how, yeah. how is my stamina and my creativity juices uh, really like keep, keeps on flowing. I mean, when you're doing a lot of shoots, it started to be like stagnant, right? Like you're doing it again and again. But I always challenge myself to go to, a shoot doing a different thing mm. not always like actually what i always do like if i'm going to a portrait shoot and the next portrait shoot and the next portrait shoot the first 30 minutes i'll do the safe shots and the next one and a half hour i'll do like a ris- risky shots that i haven't done before wow and that's one that's one way to like to make your work a lot different from before mm. and what you're doing now for example i'm changing lenses i always love using um you know 1.4, 1.2, 1.0 aperture for my lenses. But sometimes I get bored and I use just like in one wedding or like one portrait shoot, I, I use this. So this is like, um, it's 8, 16 millimeter of Fujifilm okay. uh, for the for the X series. But this is actually like um, 12, 12 to 24 millimeter for a portrait shoot. So when you do something like that, something crazy, you change your tool. You change the way you think because you cannot get the same effect or same result by using a different tool. Yes. It will always have to be different. Sometimes you hate it, but sometimes you just like, what did just happen there? Yeah. I love this. Yes. Like, Definitely. That's, like, that's, that's really cool and a good timing as well. So for anyone who's in the, in the Zoom room, if you have any questions for Don, we're, gonna, we're definitely going to do some Q&A at the end. If you're listening to this later or watching uh, later, then please join us live. 
uh, every week for Coffee with Creatives. Um, but AD asked a really great question, which I thought was uh, perfect timing. So what would you say your creative process is then around shooting? You mentioned, you know, adding in some, some challenges and, you know, mixing up lens lenses, uh, always pushing yourself to create something new. So could you speak a little bit around your creative process? Because as AD says, you know, your images are so diverse. So he's curious where you draw your inspiration from. Yeah. Thanks, Aidy. Cheers to that, man. What are you drinking? Is that is that is that is that whiskey? <laughs> Aidy's got a <the> whiskey guy. One <laughs> <laughs> second, one second. I have to do this because he just drinks his whiskey through the bottle. Can I do that like this? <laughs> <laughs> Another oh, shot of oh, Jaeger. Yes. Another shot of Jaeger goes down. So Love so it. good. It, this is actually sponsored by Jaeger Master. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tony. I mean, back to your question, man. I'm so sorry. One thing, one thing you have to know about me: I have ADHD. I get so easily distracted. I'm super distracted okay. in everything. Um, yeah. What was the question again? Uh, about <laughs> yeah, no worries, no worries. I, I can relate, and I think that's what makes us like great photographers as well, because we're always like uh, interested in in something new and something creative, and, and it keeps things like interesting as well. So. Uh, see it as a bit of a superpower but the question was the creative process like what what would you say your creative process is like walk us through um uh, a couple shoot that you have in say fiji or bali how would you how would you what's your process around that exactly well the thing is like i mean we have to consider this this is a job and and a job that we take photos of living per living living things. I mean, with emotions, with mental capacity, with complexity, um, you know, so we have to, I mean, it's not like shooting like, um, you know, like a bucket of fruits or just like food or shooting non-existing subjects. Mm -hmm. So it, it, I mean, to be near to them, emotionally connected to them is very important. Um, making feel at ease from the beginning and I mean, pushing up their, um, you know, their confidence is one way. Like, this is the most important ingredients to have, like, um, for me, to have a successful photo shoot. I mean, I don't really care about the final product, but for me, the most important ingredient for the great for a great product is, like, to be emotionally connected with a couple yeah. and to push up their confidence. Because whatever you do in the photo shoot, it will be it will it will suck. It will finally suck if they don't like how they look, the way they see their faces, their facial reaction, which side is good or which side is not good. Because sometimes we we always think like I don't know. I, it happens to me. It happened to me. I always think like oh I'm the creative here. I'm like I'm the source. I'm the, I'm like the source of sunlight. So I'm gonna <laughs> shine. <I'm> like, <laughs> Like no, I I don't know. This this is this is the thing about artists. If you consider yourself an art, artist, it oh it's always like, oh I'm so inspired. It's coming in, and I'm just like, Ooh. I'm just like sprinkling all my creative juices everywhere, and everything will be creative. But you know, that that is like, to think to think like this, it will burn you out. Yeah. To think yourself is the source of creativity, and you're not co-working or co-creating with someone, it's it's a burnout of like you know. Thinking this is a lot of responsibility. Uh, what 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 do what will do I what do I do next to be different or to do something crazy? Um, I mean to win awards, to win more likes or whatever, to have a good comment or to be published where and here. It's it's really hard thing. That's why I mean that's why I'm telling you like the the best ingredients like to have the the boost the confidence of your clients of the, of your subjects, and then to be emotionally connected them with them, and then when you did that do that. They will die for you. They will do everything, anything you ask for. Okay, so could you walk us through a couple? If they're they're nervous, right? They they're dressed up. They they're in the right location, but they're they're nervous. And you're talking about like getting on an emotional connection with them and a, and a and a level with them where they feel confident, and and then they're gonna be into some of the ideas yep. that you have. But I I totally agree. It's a yep. it's a collaboration, right? Like you yep. can only do so much. It without the couple 
or the subject being on board too, especially when you're working with humans, <laughs> if uh, if they're not on board too with the process, then it's it's a I, lot more challenging. Yes, 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 yesterday, yesterday I shot a couple of um, a couple of horses, and wow. they only really like connected to me emotionally. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you still have to create some kind of connection to them. I'm curious what the what the shoot was now, but definitely okay. But back to humans, though. How would you how would you uh, lift their energy, create that connection with them, so that you can create the kind of images that you create? I mean, you know, you know the thing about wedding photography is like what I learned. What I learned is like you see how the emotions of people evolve throughout the wedding day, from getting ready. Uh, from the ceremony through cocktail and through the photo shoot and then when they just get hammered like after the first dance after the first dance you you see them like so emotional they started hugging you like don i love you <laughs> you're the best person ever i mean you see how you know alcohol i mean lifts the spirits up and also like being uptight is like it's a, it's, a, it's a no option anymore because you, you'll see them like they, they they won't they won't be like embarrassed on doing things they stop being caring about the things happening around them so i always start with a simple drink like hey uh how about a mojito it's hot today let's start with a mojito actually it's like two or three normally when you get one mojito and it's hot you, you'll end up having another one <laughs> so we we start with <laughs> so I, I try always try to ask the the couple to drink with me and that's how we started shooting and you know drinking is actually the best way to communicate or to connect with people not to get them you know hammered because of the alcohol just to be like a little bit you know yes. flowy yeah yeah totally um have you ever had it where that wasn't a, an, an option because the couple didn't drink or they didn't um yeah they just didn't feel you know they were driving to the shoot and they didn't want to drink because they had, had to drive back how would you overcome that challenge? Yeah, it was, it was, it, yeah, it happened. It happened, especially on a morning shoot, mm. like you know, like sunrise shoot. It ha always happens. No, no, I don't know if you're if you're not a drinker, you won't actually drink your liquor four a.m. in the morning, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, it. I mean, coffee is is a good it's a good thing, but starting to shoot in a in a static position. It's the worst thing that you can do. Yeah. Asking people to do things that you want them to do is the worst thing that you can you can do. The best thing is like to be always moving, always on the go, always on the go. It's always like there's 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 a photographer who once said like, um, you know, motion is always equals to emotion. That's why they go hand in hand. Yeah. So when there's no movement, it's hard to show emotion. You, you put your couple there and ask them to do one thing. Maybe it's good if you already like, you know, have done some kind of things before that. But to start with that, it's it's a killer. It's like a, a step backwards yeah. to what you want to create afterwards. I mean, your end goal. What's your end goal? If your end goal is just like, you know, to have a static photo, that's great. But if you want your end goal is like to have something emotional and just like something raw, like this show this emotion in their faces, it's it's actually the go-to, my go-to, motion. Excellent, excellent. Um, so, okay, so you're creating motion and you mentioned, or I think I was reading as I was doing some more research on for this kind of conversation, like working with scripts versus actually posing a couple. So can you speak a little bit around what you mean by a script for a couple and why you prefer that for sure against like posing I think it's pretty obvious why why you prefer that based on your last answer, but uh, yeah, yeah. What would you say about scripts? I, I always pop up in in a shoot like, hey, look, I have <laughs> written everything I want here. Do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Just just kidding, just kidding. I mean, because if you if you give a <laughs> if if you give a command, I mean, asking for people to pose like giving a command. It's like asking telling a child what to do. Yes. It, it 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 doesn't retain in their head. If you if you told them they have to do this because they have to follow obey the orders, it they won't retain that thing on their head. But if they're like having fun or like their imagination is into it, 
they will do it. I mean, they will do it. They will do it with no question asked. Yeah. I mean, kids, for example, because I'm, I'm, I think I'm a kid on, I mean, I'm a kid at heart. Yes. I always love to laugh. I always love to play. Thanks to my kid. I always love to, I, I watch Baby Shark million of times. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, script, script is like more like describing of what you want to, um, to, to get through this shoot. Explain it to a couple like your, your outlook, your imagination, what you're imagining, because it's nice to share it with them, your plan, your game plan, so they know exactly where they have to be. Yes. Yeah, and explain to them like there's no right way of doing this, there's no wrong way of doing this. It's what, whatever pops up, whatever feels natural. But you know, this is what I'm imagining. Maybe we can do this, and then after this, it will, it'll happen this, and after that, this will happen. And they they just have they, they, there's always like um it, again it's emotion, in in script you're 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 telling emotion motion, in words mm. so they can follow through what's going to happen because if you just tell like do this they will they always ask this question now what will I do now <laughs> what this hand where should I put this hand now what because if you give orders there's always like a limit there's like they're constrained in a box they can't move here and there. But with a script, it's more like, ah, oh. it's like you, you have the, all the stage for you. You have the whole opera stage for you and you can do whatever. Perfect. So are you and saying, like, sorry, sorry, Don. No, 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 no. It's okay. So are you saying like, you know, this is something that you'll come up with on the, on the shoot, like, or is this something that you've discussed with them beforehand? Like, how, how do you come up with a script? Is it because you know their personality and they really love like a Disney movie? So now you're doing a kind of like a, a scene from a Disney film <laughs> or like what I'm curious, like, yeah. What's an example of a, of a script? I mean, I, I, I have background in theater and um, I, I, I've been in theaters for, I think for five years, uh, like professional theater. And one of the things that I've learned is it's always nice. I forgot the word in English to um, improve improvisation yes. so there's like i don't know have you have you heard about this like the improvisation method it's an exercise to tell a story with without any like you just have the, the, the questions and then people will just have to fill it up like you know uh let's see uh, uh, like once like you know like a like a baby like a ch children's book once upon a time in a far far away land there's a prince in a castle and he's, um, he's trapped because of the dragon. And one day, when he, when he walked up, there was a princess ready to save his life. And this, this improvisation can be changed by taking off the place, changing the place, changing the time, changing the subjects, and changing the, 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 the flow of the story. Mm -hmm. And, and, and this, is, this is how I did the, the script. Without, without, I mean, you don't have to be like, you know, did the background check of the couple. It's, uh, you can actually feel the vibe while you're drinking because normally you spend like half an hour. I, I always tell the people like, hey, we'll spend two, three hours shooting together. But, you know, like 30, 40 minutes of that part, it's, it's drinking. <laughs> totally, totally. So you, so you start it's off just, with... Drinking. Sorry, so... Yeah, yeah. So you start off with a, with a few drinks. Yeah, exactly. you, you essentially uh, exactly. we start. have a great conversation, exactly. and good time, relax them, and then exactly. you get, get maybe some ideas for a script, and then exactly. move to a location. And it's then... most 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 of the time. It's not it's not about their background. It's it's mostly of, of their personality. Who's more shy? Who's more outgoing? So you can like actually do, tell that shy person what to do in a script, and to this outgoing guy or girl what to do on a shoot because you cannot give the same script to a shy person and outgoing person it will be totally different story but yeah you can do that as well that's that's how you see their personality it's amazing but you know if you you're going to a certain you have a certain goal in mind you have to be careful to which person you give a script mm -hmm. you know to fit that to fit the personality or the character you have in mind yeah well okay great and so when you're when you're on a shoot how do you 
find working with Helen? Do you have like specific roles? Do you take it in turns? What's the kind of dynamic like for you both as a, as a yeah. couple shooting weddings? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we work well together. We work well, very, very well together because we're uh, two different types of photographer um, and two different types of person. And she's like, I'm, I'm like the crazy one. She's like the logical one, and thinking through things. And I'm just like, whatever. And then throw the ball to me. Throw the ball to me. I'm like, I'm like a dog, technically. <laughs> I'm like a playful dog. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> and Helen's most of the times like she's like you know the ninja cat. You know a ninja cat. Have you seen a ninja cat before? Yes, yes, definitely. Healthy, quiet, quiet. She, her style is more like street photography style. So if 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 you see if you see a photo that's around f f five point six f sixteen, that's her photo, mm. that's her vibe. So we're totally different different uh, kind of uh, photographer, and that's why we work well together. I think the difference actually uh, work well if you're shooting with a second shooter. Sometimes like when we can work together, we always find a second shooter that is totally different from us. Why I'm saying this because most of the times when I, I I'm in a lot of groups on Facebook, and people are like, oh guys I'm looking for a second photographer and I need someone who shoots like me, mm. and looks like this and use the same gear, but the thing is, you're you're creating some you're asking to shoot with someone, I mean, doing that the photos will look the same, the angles will look the same, the colors will look the same. And everything's the same. I want a second shooter that's totally different than me. So I'm delivering an image or a series of images that's totally different that fills up what I'm missing. Wow. Okay, great. And have you found that uh, it's been challenging finding someone who is, well, I guess you know exactly what you're going to shoot. So then finding someone who's different isn't as, as challenging or have you found that challenging? Uh, actually, the most challenging part is to find someone not totally different on how you shoot, but the personality, the character of that person. Are they, I mean, are they nice kind of person? Are they like, you know, <laughs> they will not backlash to the clients when you're shooting them, where they get irritated. You know, that's, that's the, the, the hardest part. To find someone, I mean, once you want find that person, you always go to the same one because it's hard to trust someone, um, you know, that you don't know. Totally. So it's more important to have like uh, definitely instead of asking for similar gear, similar colors, similar lenses, ask for someone who's going to have like a similar, uh, give your clients like a similar client experience. But how they shoot, if it's totally different, that's that's totally fine because at the end of exactly. the day. Exactly. Yeah, you want to make sure the experience of the client is is number one, um, because yeah, exactly. I find no matter how beautiful because, your images because are, it will add, yeah, if they it don't it have a good add experience, up. it will add up. Yes, it's it's funny because people are always telling me, oh, telling us, I don't know if it happens to your session, like they always, they are, oh, the photos are nice, but we always remember you guys, like how you made us feel when you took this photo, and. I think that we have we have to consider that. I mean, we have to put that here on our foreheads most of the time because we are so visual. We are so visual. We always go for that. And sometimes we forget about these things, mm. which is the most important thing, actually, when we shoot, um, you know, people. Yes. We photograph people. So let's let's scrap up that word. We photograph people instead of saying shoot people. Yeah. yeah. That sounds that sounds a little bit violent. <laughs> well definitely so we are okay you're also shooting outside of people you mentioned uh doing some product photography and things like that so you have a wide range you're quite quite diverse and and shooting different things can you talk a little bit around your uh well one how how you're finding that kind of work and then also your experience doing that because now you don't can't have a drink with a product before you you shoot but yet you're creating something new and different or are you creating something that the couple or the client 
uh, has requested to look in a certain way and that's just something that you do share a little bit around your pro yeah process there yeah it, it's always like when you're when you're shooting for a product or shooting for your for fashion it's always like you sit down with the creative director it's always a go there's no way like you always like you want to create it for yourself it's, as I told you, it's always like a co-creation. Everything is co-creation. There's nothing like you solo flying. It's it's difficult. It, that's difficult emotionally and mentally. And you have to sometimes to step back and believe on on the other people's um you know um opinions on their on their ideas. And that's that's how you actually grow as a photographer. And I experienced this like. I mean, this this is the me talking about products, but as well in, in when shooting when photographing people, and I experienced this when when pandemic happened, and I start we started photographing online, and shooting online people, and you know using these apps that some of our friends created, and we shoot through you know with 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 our with our laptops, and that we're using the iPhone 11 I think that just came up that that time in the pandemic, and we're creating like images and mind-blowing images that we're proud of but what we're mostly proud of that is because we don't have total control of what's happening we have to believe on what they see and you know on on what they're showing us mm. and then you have to think like okay uh, can you do this and do that and then it's always sometimes it's not 100 percent the the way that the camera is placed but sometimes like, oh, this is more interesting than what I told you. And it's like a collaboration that you don't have a lot of control. And sometimes it's even more interesting or even more spectacular than what you have um, imagined. Mm. Wow, beautiful. So that was during the pandemic you were doing kind of uh, some, through an, through an app or through Zoom, you were like doing some photos yeah, with, with, with couples. Exa well. Exactly. And, and, and the quality is amazing. I was, I was surprised. Are you still doing and it And the now? quality was amazing. I'm still doing that. Wow. I'm still doing that. You can see actually on, on my page and like the, you can see like um, um, behind the scene of what it is. I'm talking to them like, hey, uh, have you prepared some of this like, you know, table lamps? Yes. Yeah, I, I got it all like 20 like, table lamps in my house. That's a big house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's incredible. Awesome. Awesome, Don. Well, Again, for the audience uh, for that's here live, if you have any questions for Don, please place them in the chat. We're going to get to them very soon. Don, what does 2023, what are, you, what are you most excited for? You mentioned definitely what April looks like and, and you've got many shoots. Uh, going to be very busy, but again, like someone who loves challenges, loves working uh, in, in new locations. What does uh, the rest of 2023 look like for you and what are you most excited for? okay i'll be sincere with you i'm most excited not of the destination not because of the de destination weddings i'm mostly excited because i'm booking like local weddings in my town right, right. <laughs> because i mean i'm going i'm going to sleep in my bed by mm -hmm. the end of the day so just like eight hours i'm in my bed i'm going to hug my baby read her story and we're all together and i think that's 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 mostly i'm excited about because simple things, you lose track of this. But, you know, this is what, what life is. We work because of this. Why? So why don't we, you know, work less and enjoy more of this? And that's, that's what we're, like, you know, trying to shift. Mm -hmm. Instead of, like, traveling a lot, uh, not being rooted, we're trying to be here more homely, trying to root up. Yeah, great. You mentioned... Connect with friends. Totally. Yeah, you mentioned the other day your your daughter would travel with you to all of the destinations, and now she's she's in school. So so that's shifting. How do, how do you feel like your mindset has shifted? Then you touched a bit up, upon it just there, but yeah, how's the mindset shifted, and and how have you kind of worked through that? In the in the beginning, it's it's hard, right? Because I mean, doing destination wedding, it, and when you have this clientele, it's it's it. It brings it brings the bread in the table. One destination, let's let's do a comparison. One destination, it's like ten local weddings, so it's a totally different vibe. But you know, you have you have to sacrifice something if you want to get 
the other thing. You can you can do both. It's hard to do both. In the end of the day, you lose balance, you get burned out, you get depressed because you're not you know achieving both. You can you can achieve both uh, goals at the same time. Mm. Yeah, excellent. And so you mentioned uh, a mentor of yours that you said you you think may still be shooting now. Are you still in touch with this mentor? And and how has a how has a mentor been? important in your career as a as a photographer and as an entrepreneur in business you touch a little bit upon that it's important to have someone like you know that you admire to that tells you dude you're doing good and he you're doing good someone that you admire to and tells you sincerely you're doing good oh man you grow so well i mean i i, I still remember when I met you and now look at you. I mean, this is this is nice. This is amazing. Actually, not only the mentor, <clears throat> I always keep, you know, videos that the couple sent us, you know, their for their reaction videos uh -huh. when they see their photos or their slideshow. I always keep that here in my computer, in all my computers, in all our computers. Because sometimes when you feel down or when there's like, you know, there's a painful client that's that's giving you problems. You just, I just came to, through this video, like, dude, they are, they, they are happy of what we're doing. They're happy. I mean, because sometimes there's like, I don't know this feeling. I don't know how you call this. Like, there's this feeling that you, we're not good enough, that we're not doing, you know, more. We're not doing our best. It always, it, we, we always have this, this wall in front of us. You know, I don't know. This happens to me like every, I don't know. Every three months, <laughs> regularly, <laughs> it's like a thing for me. And I'm just like here, playing again a video, the messages, reading the messages from the couple. And this actually, this actually helps us to keep going mm -hmm. and through all these years of shooting weddings and couples. That's great. Thank you, Don. Appreciate you sharing so openly how, you know, your journey has progressed over, over the years and Excited to see the photos in April and beyond and to keep in touch. And really thank you for, for being a guest on Coffee with Creators. We're, we're new here starting off and to have yourself, AD, in the past as well and many others coming up. Excited to continue the conversation. So I hope to you know, really connect with you again soon and, and really appreciate you being here. Hey, man. Thanks. Anytime. It, it's really cool. This is really cool. I mean... If, if if you need me anytime, just, just call me. Will do. Thank you, Don.